I wish I was taught this way of finding the greatest common factor when I was in school. It's called the ladder method. So say that we're trying to find the greatest common factor of 48 and 120. What we do is we factor out factors that they have in common until we can't anymore. So what's a good start? Let's say someone says that they know that they have a factor of 12 in common. Then let's divide. 48 divided by 12 is 4, and 120 divided by 12 is 10. Now, do 4 and 10 have a common factor? Well, besides 1. Yes, they have a factor of 2 in common, so let's factor out a 2 from both numbers. Now, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. And 2 and 5 are what we call relatively prime, meaning they have no factor in common besides 1, so we're done. So to find the greatest common factor, all we do is multiply the factors that we factored out. So the greatest common factor of 48 and 120 is 24. And what's great about the latter method is that we can do it in different ways and arrive at the same answer. For example, someone else could have done it like this. And here's a bonus. If we're working with two numbers, multiplying the numbers in this L shape would give us the least common multiple. So the least common multiple of 48 and 120 is 12 times 2 times 2 times 5, or 24 times 10, which is 240. And we can kind of see why this works by looking at this Venn diagram. So in school, I was taught to list factors and factor trees, and those are important. But if you ask me to find the greatest common factor now, I would go straight to Euclidean algorithm or ladder method. If you don't know what Euclidean algorithm is, check out the video that I posted a couple videos ago.